Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Nelson Nash. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. What an outstanding group of people you put together here. I, you know, I could go home now and it would be a, a, a successful a week. So, thank you very much for this opportunity. We're going to be together for a day and a half. We need to really get to know each other a little bit more. Uh, I assume all of you in the insurance business, from what I've gathered so far, there's no one here that's not in the business. Okay. Now, I guess I can assume that you've all read my book, Becoming Your Own Bank. No exception? Long how time many, ago. How many, have you, how many of you have read it at least 10 times? <clears throat> Anybody more than that? All right. I know people who've read it 30 times and they've said that they learn something new every time. Every, yeah. time. every single yeah. time. Well, why is this true? When the student is why? ready, the teacher will appear. Why is this true? Now, those of you who've heard me speak before know that uh, participation in the seminar is uh, uh, a plus. We learn more when we uh, participate, okay? I've been doing these seminars for over 30 years. I have never hurt anybody in a seminar. <laughs> I promise you, I will not hurt you. Do we have a deal? Yeah, we have a deal. deal. Okay. Uh, perhaps from uh, the book, then you've learned a little bit about me that, uh, first of all, I'm a Christian. I made that commitment when I was nine years old. Uh, everything that I'll be telling you or talking about or have written about has gone through that filter first. Now, all of you know that I'm a forester by education, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, that's important. Learn to think long range. Steve, I think 70 years down the road. I'm not going to be here. Well, neither are you, so there. <laughs> Uh, plan if you're going to live forever, live as if you're going to die today is a pretty good idea. So I say think at least three generations in the future. We're working on the fourth. We have three children, ten grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. Uh, we've established systems for all of these people uh, down through the years. Uh, their lives are totally different from the way that the average person uh, lives today. It's because of solving the banking function. Now, uh, are all of you familiar with my website? Have you all been to infinitebanking.org? Yes. yes. Have you spent much time on the, re on the uh, website? For instance, uh, go to resources and look at uh, banknotes. That's our monthly newsletter. I'm extracting articles there, primarily from uh, the Mises Institute and the Foundation for Economic Education and places like that. And occasionally I'll uh, put something in there myself. Um, what about the reading list? Have y'all looked at that reading list? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's 365 books on there. I do not put a book on there that I haven't read. Now, if you read all of those uh, books, you have one PhD in Austrian economics, one PhD in history. Are all of you familiar with what I, when I say Austrian economics, or do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Do we have a problem at all? Well, we've got to spend a little bit of time there then, because uh, uh, Dr. Clarence Carson Oh, was a dear friend of Mary's and mine. We met him through Foundation for Economic Education many years ago. He wrote this book called The World and the Group of an Idea back in the early 70s. It came out serially in the, uh, the journal of the Foundation for Economic Education. It came out uh, serially one chapter per month, and I think there's 24 chapters to it. Then it came out in hard uh, copy, and then I read it at least three other times. Uh, that is a phenomenal book because it uh, gets to the heart of the problem that plagues us all out here today. Uh, 
Mary and I, like I said, we worked with him for 22 years. Now, uh, Dr. Paul Cleveland, do y'all know who I'm talking about there? Mm -hmm. How about the little video uh, Banking with Life? Have y'all seen that? Yeah. Banking with Life. All right, now uh, there's some, uh, that is a fantastic uh, little uh, overview of everything that I'm talking about. It is so good that when I saw it for the first time, I had to shed a tear. Someone finally put this thing together in a video form uh, with uh, uh, just exceptional editing by uh, the, uh, the filmer of the show, of the uh, video. Dr. Paul Cleveland uh, is an Austrian economist at Birmingham Southern University there in Birmingham. Uh, I was reading the Freeman years ago and I came across this outstanding article and got down to the bottom of it and I said, my word, this guy's from Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> within hours, uh, we were talking. Within days, we were having lunch and within weeks, we had recruited him to be on the uh, board of directors of Dr. Clarence Carson's uh, support group. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, we all, the three of us became very, very good uh, close friends and uh, when Carson died, Paul and I got to conduct his funeral, so that's uh, a, a real hallmark to me uh, to be able to do such a thing. Clarence wrote from an economic point of view about things in history. Well, as a result of this, uh, when Clarence died, all the rights to the works of Dr. Carson were uh, given to Dr. Paul Cleveland. And so uh, I was coming up to Edmonton a couple of years ago, um, and the seminar course is going to be on Friday and Saturday. And uh, I've had uh, back troubles uh, quite a while. I had my first uh, epidural shot to my back. That was on a Tuesday. I was scared to death that the doctors were going to tell me, you can't make that trip to Edmonton. They said, oh, no, no problem. Just don't do anything this day. Well, I took them at their word, Wayne. I didn't do a cotton picking thing. I lay on that sofa in my work office. Well, I uh, was looking at all the books on my briefcase and that top shelf in the far corner, whirled in the grip of an idea. And it had been ruminating in my mind for the last six months before this event that I'm telling you about that how important that book was uh, that uh, the world needs to understand. And uh, so I said, my word, that's that book. Mary, go get the ladder, uh, get that book down. And so I reread it uh, on the way to Edmonton and back. And when I got back, I said to Dr. Paul Cleveland, Paul, that book has got to come back out again. But uh, it needs to be brought up to date and uh, there's a number of things in there that won't be all that valuable to people today because it's historical things that happened during World War II and so forth. Well, uh, the name of the book is um, hmm, The Great Utopian Delusion. Uh, how many of you read that? Oh, hallelujah, glory. But all of you should read that book, please. That is such an important message. Because the uh, idea that uh, has the grip, uh, the world in its grip, is, I guess you may just call it socialism, that's all. It can't work. I didn't say it won't work. It can't work. Because, as I told you from my Christian background, uh, I have told you that I've been studying Austrian economics with a passion so, for uh, 59 years now. And from those two studies, it's very evident to me that every government program of any kind is nothing more than man trying to play God in the pagan sense of the word. And the book of Exodus, Curtis, tells you very plainly, God is a jealous God. He's not going to put up that stuff. And so they all fall on their face. But they fall on their face over just a long period of time. People don't see it happening to them. Do y'all know how to boil a frog? Do you know how to boil a frog? No, slowly. Uh -huh. You put him in water, his temperature will, he's comfortable. <laughs> Up the temperature just a little. He's comfortable. 
of it just a little bit more later on. He's comfortable. Incrementally, they keep adding some. Uh, you can boil that frog. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, but it's a real good work, a work picture. But I've heard no know that that's been proven in a laboratory. Um, we make one minor deviation from principle. That makes the next deviation easier. Well, that makes the th this third one easier. And all of a sudden, you made a fish hook turn 180 degrees opposite and never knew it happened to you. And that's what's happened to our world today. The world is in the grip of the of Maynard Keynes. How many of y'all know about Maynard Keynes? That's all? Y'all need to get acquainted because your life is totally controlled today by that food. I can't classify it any other way. But who's the real fool? Maynard Keynes or people who listen to it, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's the real problem. Uh, I remember very well in our country when Richard Nixon uh, took us off the gold standard uh, on the television, he says, we're all Keynesians now. Now, if I had had a uh, brick, I'd have thrown it through the television. Uh, now, that wouldn't have done my television any good, and it wouldn't have done me any good either, but it would have got a little bit of frustration out of my system. But I did shout at the television, you are not talking about me. The general idea of Keynesianism is that you can spend yourself rich. There's no way. In our country, there's the QEs and the QE2s and QE3s and so forth. Qualitative easing. Now, you're no better in Canada, so there. Yeah. <laughs> I studied all this sort of stuff in countries all over. And the, the, the grip is there. Uh, the whole uh, EU thing uh, was destined to come apart because it was a stupid idea. Uh, there's no right way to do wrong, whatever. Well, that brings me to the observation that uh, in this world that we live, uh, have you noticed how much noise surrounds us? Constantly. Everywhere you go, in every field, there's noise. And I think the, the financial community is the noisiest of all. There are people who refuse to write about anything in the financial world because of that particular fact. Now, have you ever experienced uh, noise canceling headsets by those? Mm -hmm. uh, now, nice stuff. my wife gave me the, these a uh, number of years ago for my birthday. Uh, and on long trips, I don't mess with them for an hour trip like that, something like that. But, uh, you know, I'll use them going home by, on next Monday. Uh, <clears throat> You take those little foam uh, things and put it here first, and then put this thing on, and then turn these uh, switch on, and uh, that baby crying uh, three rows up there doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> I can read and so forth. I can get a lot of reading done on airplanes and so forth. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a financial noise canceling headset? There is. There is no such thing. But you can learn uh, to create one yourself. Learn to recognize noise and don't spend time with it, okay? So a little story might help out a little bit. Uh, Y'all ever heard about the uh, cowboy in the blacksmith shop? Y'all know what a blacksmith is? Yeah. Okay. You know what a cowboy is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Blacksmith is over there on the forge, uh, the red hot coals and there's a horseshoe that's red hot. He's got his tongs, he takes it off and puts it with an anvil, he's hammering on it, shaking it and such. And just a short while before that, the cowboy walked into the blacksmith shop and cowboy curiosity, walking around picking up first one, then another, examining it, wonder what this is. Well, like the, uh, by this time, the uh, blacksmith, has the, the horseshoe's changed color wheel. And he throws it over the sand pit to cool off. 
cowboy got around to the sand pit. Picked up that horse, she threw it down. Blacksmith says, hot, wasn't it? Trying to preserve his dignity, the cowboy says, no, nah, just don't take me long to look at a horseshoe. <laughs> <laughs> so Curtis, you can need to recognize a horseshoe. Don't spend a whole lot of time with it. You're going to get burnt. <laughs> <laughs> There's more of natural noise out there. And you gave such a wonderful testimony to that a while ago, Jesse. <laughs> What an education you have, love. <laughs> she learned all about how to do it wrong, right? <laughs> well, that way you know what a horseshoe looks like now, don't you? <laughs> so, you know, from the worst of conditions, you can get uh, great education. <laughs>